In this episode, I'm going to look at something that probably shouldn't even be looked at. A Sony CCD TR71 little 8mm camcorder that's not working. And we want to get to the bottom of it and see why it's not. So let's check this out. This is a Sony CCD TR71 8mm camcorder that was brought in by a client to see whether this one is, is going to be repairable as they want me to try and sell it for them and well we know that the camera is probably not worth anything other than to somebody who wants to archive tapes that was recorded in eight millimeter so uh, I haven't plugged this thing in haven't connected it haven't done anything with it yet let's first of all see if it even works It's lighting up. Let's see if the uh, let's see if the tape compartment will open. So far, so good. We look down into the viewfinder. We'll see that the viewfinder itself has no horizontal deflection. So there's definitely a fault there. I want to see if this thing's able to play a tape. Maybe it's just a viewfinder problem, but let's see if it'll play a tape. The camera section appears to work. Okay, it's not zooming. The zoom is not working on the lens. That may be the lens is stuck. So the power zoom's not working, the viewfinder's not working. Uh, let's see if it'll play a tape. So I've got a tape in the machine, and let's see if it'll play. This is a pre-recorded tape in 8mm, and I have no picture. If I put it in pause, I get a very distorted picture. Very bad all dark if I go to fast forward as you can see this unit has a problem and that problem is going to be capacitors we'll um, take the unit apart but uh, it's likely not going to be repairable the person that gave me this little camcorder wanted me to try and sell it for them. And, well, this is not something that I would feel comfortable selling to anybody. Just because, um, first of all, they want money for it. And if I'm going to repair the thing, uh, anything I could get for it would be going to the cost of the repair. But the big problem with something like this is... Even if I could get the thing working where it would play properly, I, I couldn't guarantee it. If I, if I sold this on behalf of someone else and it didn't work, guess who it's coming back to? So I think on this one I'll be, I'll be telling the owner of it that, sorry, that your camera is shot. But we'll take it apart and take a quick peek at it. But I, I, I can't see me spending any time on a unit like this just because I know what the fault is going to be. It's going to be surface mounted electrolytic capacitors that are bad. The viewfinder is also bad as you saw. But this is typical what happens to these old camcorders. But we'll take it apart just for fun. I guess I should probably close down the cassette compartment. So 
So to open up a camcorder like this, we remove all the screws that have got arrows marking on them. Here's going to be the problem. Surface mounted electrolytics. It's going to be full of them and they're going to all be shot, or a lot of them are going to be shot. As I say, there's, there's three problems that I can see right now with this camera. One, it doesn't play because there's a, a, ca a cap, at least a cap, multiple caps are going to be bad in the video circuit. That's for starters. Two, the lens does not zoom. And three, the viewfinder does not uh, display a picture, just a vertical line. So, um, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be doing much on this one. Uh, am I missing a screw? Oh, I am. I'm missing one screw. I was wondering why. And it has no sound. So, it has a video problem and there's no sound on playback. So we'll just take this apart and you guys can see what's in one of these little cameras. Pop out that connector on the bottom. And there's the viewfinder. We'll check that cap. It's usually one of the ones that goes bad camera section was actually putting out a picture. DC to DC converter is here. That's the DC to DC converter board. Again, surface mounted caps. There's one there. Let's just uh, measure the ESR on that one. It's leaking out of it already. Yeah, it's open. See that? That cap is open. If we um, I'll get the camera in close so you guys can see it, the electrolytic the, the is leaking out of it. So if you look down here, you can see the solder around here is all discolored where it's soldered down from the crap that's been leaking out of it. And that's the problem with them, is that they, they leak. So this was the Hi-Fi audio board. And all these caps, you can see where they've been leaking. You can see it discolored.
Yeah, where's my switch? These these uh, mechanisms are kind of neat the way that these ones load. I'll show you guys a good close up of how these micro uh, mechanisms loaded because they wrapped the tape more than 180 degrees. They wrapped it almost 360. Watch the loading mechanism when it loads up. As you can see. The tape is wrapped almost 360 degrees. It's brought out, brought around here, around this uh, tensioning arm and tape stabilizer, and then it wraps around the head drum, starting here and ending over here, and then around another set of guides, another stabilizing uh, roller, and then the pinch roller and capstan shaft is over here. No problem with the tape the way it runs. It's running fine. It's just it's not uh, producing a picture. Now if I check this capacitor over here, it might be just this one that's causing the problems more than anything. It might just be this one over here. This is a, uh, what size is this one? Two twenty. Let's look at two hundred and twenty. Let's just try bridging that and see whether it changes the picture and brings the picture back. Let's just show you how ridiculous these things were, the way they were built. To loosen that screw, take out another screw here, and then this should slide. I think it's going to slide down. soldered down. I'm going to take off this. I'm going to melt the solder here. In order to free up the DC to DC converter board so I can flip it out of the way and then I can flip this board over and look at some of the caps underneath here because this is not the only one. There's other ones underneath here that are probably the ones that are going to cause the problem. As I say, these, these camcorders were almost impossible to work on. That's why so few uh, techs actually worked on these things. It's pretty specialized. Looks like this IC here has been changed on this, this one right here. Okay, now that that's undone, I can now slide this back and then I can take this board here and I can flip this board over like this and reveal some of the other parts in the video board. This is the, the video board for playback. All these ones over here, these are to do with just the camera, but the one that's going to be causing the problem in playback it's going to be one of these ones here on this board. I don't think there's any on the other side of this board. No, they're all on the front here. So it's going to be one of these ones that's, that's causing the, the, the big playback problem. If I apply power to this thing again, I should be able to
play it back and see if I can bridge the cap that's causing the problem. This was the biggest headache on these things was just to put, plug them together so that you could test them while they were apart. I'll give it power. And will it work? So what I'm doing here is I'm bridging a couple of caps and I'm just looking at the screen to see if there's any change whatsoever because the video right now is really dark um, and crushed and the sink is all crushed that's why the picture is blanking. So the first cap I tried didn't do anything let's uh, try this one and see if we get any results. Looking at a freeze frame, looking for any change. Ah, that's the one. This one here. Watch what I'll show you what happens when I put the camera at it when I bridge this cap. Watch what it does to the picture. So I'm just putting in freeze frame so that I actually get a picture. Watch the levels change when I when I bridge this one here. Uh, where am I? See that? So if I if I unpause it and I bridge this one. I have a picture that's almost normal. Let's just change that one and put the right the right value in. That one's bad for sure. Let me just put the right value of little cap. To, we'll just bridge it down on the board. So this is the one here. It's a 47 microfarad. I don't have a surface mount to put in there. But I can probably put a regular one in. Just for the hell of it. I mean, they're all probably bad, but this is this is the one that's causing the biggest problem right here. And you can see the crap that's on the board. I can probably lay this one down like right like that. Either like that or like this. Maybe able to lay it down like this and just bring the leads over to it and bend them down at a right angle. I don't have a lot of room, right? Don't have a lot of room in here to put this thing. I think I'll do it this on this side here. And we'll just we'll have the leads quite long to get over to there. Snips might be lying.
Now you might be wondering why I'm doing this. This is this is more of a teaching project than anything because I was given this camcorder to sell. So there's no money in it for me. I'm not being paid to fix this thing. Uh, the owner of it wanted me to sell the camera for them. You know, because she's thinking the the lady that owns this thinks that she's going to get some money for it, and it's you know, if I were to sell it, <laughs> the money would have to go to the cover the cost of the repair. So it's not going to get sold. So this is just basically a a repair to show you guys it it, it will work, and uh, and that's about the end of it. Okay, let's see if it'll play the tape back any better now. Okay, moment of truth. Can't play this for more than a few seconds, but... Next morning. Five hours too late. It's turned out. Okay. It plays. Problem solved. One capacitor caused the fault. Are these other ones bad as well? Absolutely, they're bad. They just weren't as bad as this one. So I changed the one that is uh, definitely causing the biggest fault for this. So this thing now will play a tape. And uh, we'll open up the viewfinder. It's going to be another cap in the viewfinder. It's not zooming. Um, I don't know why it doesn't zoom. Is it the lens is stuck or is it, uh, is it something else? Is it the membrane key switch that's gone bad? But it, it's not zooming either. So this thing's got multiple problems that uh, it's just not worth fixing. But I've got it now to the point where it will play a tape. It actually has probably got some value now because if someone was looking for an 8mm camera just to play back their tapes on to uh, archive them, it now works to do that. So I'm going to put this thing sort of together. Put the board back in. And put the power supply back on it here. so that that part doesn't get damaged. I think I've got everything on here now. We'll remove the screws from the viewfinder and open it up. I've already taken the screws out, so I should be able to pop this thing apart now. And we'll take a look at what's under the... Uh, take a look at what's under the cover here. Nice little citizen tube. This is much like the one I've already got. A little small little viewfinder that I showed off. It's one of the same as this. Cute little tube. But no uh, horizontal deflection. It's going to be a cap that's bad. Let's figure out together which one it is. First I'll put the rest of the camera kind of back together so that I can power this thing up without running risk of damaging cables and ribbons and stuff because that's always the risk if you're, if you're running it with it all in pieces that you're going to damage one of the ribbon cables. So I'm just going to kind of snap the camera back together with the viewfinder apart in this case. So that goes together like that and we'll put the power in. Which way does it go? Uh, positive is in. The positive goes in. Well, we'll leave that out for now because I need to connect it to power. Okay, so that's that. We'll connect the power leads up to it. Okay, we'll pop out the circuit board for the little uh, viewfinder here. 
I should just lift out the viewfinder. Uh, the red and black wires is the horizontal, and the orange and blue is the vertical. So if we look at the plug here, we'll see that the plug is connected right here, and it goes through this coil, and there's a capacitor right there. That yellow cap. It's a uh, 82 microfarad at 10 volts. It looks like it's an Elna, and it's going to be bad. Pretty much guarantee either that or it's this little linearity coil has come unsoldered. Let me just take a look at this and see whether the connections here are good. Uh, yeah, it's going to be this cap. Guaranteed this Elna is bad. Or it's cracked. Uh, I can see some crap around the... Uh, the edge of the, the cap here like it's been leaking you can see it let's just remove this cap I bet you it's going to start smoking when I take it out Notice that my bird is uh, chirping in the background again. You can hear him in there in the distance. Yeah, this cap's been leaking. You can see it. You can see the, the crud that's been coming out of the bottom of this thing. It'll be open. We'll measure it. But it's going to be open. open completely see I got the closest one I could find physically that's going to fit it's a little bit higher in capacity it's a hundred mic instead of instead of 82 because I don't have an 82 but we'll we'll try this one let's see whether I have full screen deflection now on the little tube well you know we do a little bit on the bright side I have to turn things down because it's kind of cranked up We'll mount the circuit board again here and uh, turn the brightness control down because I guess it got bumped when I took it apart. Okay, now it's just to try adjusting the brightness on this little tube. The brightness control right down here. Where is it? It has a picture. Okay, I'm just going to throw this thing together um, because it's not worth spending any more time on this thing. As I said before, this was more of a... Let's see what's wrong with this piece of crap. But um, it's, uh, it's not worth fixing. It's not worth putting any more time or effort into. I'm not going to even consider fixing the lens on this thing because 
I don't know where the fault is either it's it's the actual lens itself is jammed or whether it's the the ribbon uh, connector quite often the little connector here broke this is very very common on these because it's always doing this right when people open it and close it this was a very common failure and then you lose your your zoom it's either that or the lens itself is uh, is frozen but either way at this stage of the game that's not going to be addressed I like this little this little clip here. You can flip this up. That made it a little stand, so if you're wanting to film yourself and you wanted it just a little bit up from lying flat on the table, you could flip this up and this would raise the camera up ever so slightly so that you could you know if you're if you're filming yourself, you could lift it up a bit without using a tripod. That's what that was for. Yeah, I would imagine that the batteries on this thing use the old uh, NP like 66 and NP 77 and stuff. The old nickel cadmium batteries. I, I don't think the nickel cadmium batteries are going to hold a charge either after all these years for this thing. I mean, after all this, this camcorder. Um, what's the date on this thing? 92. 1992 and it still plays it still works just a, one cap in the video and one in the viewfinder and uh, this thing sort of works it works good enough for somebody to play their tapes to capture them and that is about the extent of how well this thing is going to be working. Um, it's lucky that it works that well, actually, considering how old this thing is. I'm going to play a tape on here to verify that it's working once I've got it back together. And then I'm going to close this video off and call this one a success. It might be ugly, but it's a success anyway. There we go. It's fixed. I paused it. Fast forward. Reverse search. And you know what? I play. And you know what? It's a. Uh, it's good enough for someone to. Uh, transfer their tapes. Now I'll talk to the person that owns this thing give them a realistic idea of what the thing is going to be worth to sell and how much I'm going to charge them to fix it 
And basically, if I can sell this thing, I'm going to tell her I'm not giving her anything for it because she wanted me to fix it and sell it. And uh, for someone who wants to play back tapes, it'll work for that. Let's see how the camera looks. I should do, try doing a recording on it too. I've got a blank tape here, so let's just try doing a recording on the thing for the, for the hell of it and see um, how well it works for playback or for recording. So let's rewind this tape. I think this is a digital 8 tape that's on here, but I don't think it's got anything on there that I have to worry too much about. Okay, let's do a, let's do a recording. Am I recording? Uh, where are we here? Yeah, I'm recording. Yep, yeah, I'm recording now. A little picture in the viewfinder. I'm getting a bit of feedback here from my monitor. Oh, yeah, the camera's not looking very good. The camera itself has got, uh, it's not zooming. The picture on the camera itself is not its not terrific, but we'll see if it plays back. Okay, so there's playback. So it, it works. Um, so it's working. It's working about as well as could be expected for a camcorder from 1993, only changing two parts. Obviously, if all the capacitors were replaced on this thing, it's going to look better than that. But again, something like this, someone who's looking for something of this vintage is not, I don't think, looking for it to make recordings on. They're looking for it so that they can play back tapes that they already have for copying them onto something. So for someone to use it for that, it might have some value. At least it plays back properly. It records okay. I mean, it's 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 eight millimeter. It's not. We're not talking uh, a high definition picture by any stretch of the imagination. It was eight millimeter. It was you know it was basically VHS quality on a smaller tape. So anyway, it seems to be working okay okay as i say it's not great but then it's eight millimeter high eight did a much better job a much better picture than regular eight but anyway that's uh this little ccd tr what was it tr 71 did i say it was uh ccd tr 71 there it is it's working again thanks for watching we'll catch you again in the next one bye for now